about five minutes ago and it executed three times. So let's enable OSPF on router 2 and see how the output changes. So on router 2, show IP interface brief will allow me to see the interfaces configured on this router. And as you can see here, 10122 has been configured on serial 1/0 and 10131 has been configured on serial 1/1. Let's configure a loopback on this router. So interface loopback 0, IP address, and let's configure it as quadruple 2. Typing the command router, OSPF2 will enable OSPF on this router with process ID 2. And in this case, let's enable OSPF using this format. So I've essentially said, just enable OSPF on all interfaces and let's put those interfaces in area 0. As you can see here, a neighbor relationship or adjacency has been formed. Neighbor 10151 on serial 1 0 has gone from the loading state to the full state. The full state means that the routers are exchanging link state updates with one another. This can get confusing. Neighbor 10151 is not directly connected to us. IP address 10151 is not directly connected to router 2. However, that IP address is the router ID of router 1. And router 2 has formed a neighbor relationship with router 1. And thus, the router ID for router 1 is shown in the output, not the IP address of serial 1 slash 0. By the same token, on router 1, notice a neighbor relationship has been formed with quadruple 2 on serial 1 slash 0. Notice that the process ID on router 1 is 1, whereas the process ID on router 2 is 2. Process IDs are local to the routers and do not have to be the same. So I can type the command show IP OSPF interface and you can see that OSPF is enabled on the loopback interface, serial 1 slash 1 interface, serial 1 slash 0 interface, which are the three interfaces configured on router 2. Going back to router 1 and typing the command show IP OSPF will allow me to see that the SPF algorithm has now been executed five times because new routes have been added to the topology. Show IP OSPF neighbor will allow me to see my OSPF neighbors. Router 1 at the moment only has a neighbor relationship with router 2. Notice the relationship is full. Notice the dash. The dash means that no election has taken place on this interface. And the reason why is that it's a point-to-point -point link. On a fast Ethernet network, you would see various states here like DR for designated router, BDR, for backup designated router and DR other, in other words the neighbor is neither a DR or a BDR. It's important to realize this command show IP OSPF neighbor is giving me information about my neighbor router not about me. In other words neighbor with IP address quadruple 2 is connected to our local serial 1 slash 0 interface and the neighbor's IP address on that interface it's 10, 1, 2, 2. On router 2, show IP OSPF neighbor will allow me to see similar information for router 1. Notice router 1's neighbor ID is 10, 1, 5, 1. Now as per best practice, we should be using a loopback for the router ID rather than a physical interface. So on router 1, let's create a loopback interface. and type the command do show IP OSPF interface and you'll notice that the router ID has remained the same. You'll also notice that the loopback interface is not in the list of interfaces and the reason for that is that we only enabled OSPF on specific interfaces so typing the command do show run pipe section OSPF will allow me to see 
the configuration of OSPF and the running configuration. And as you can see here, OSPF has not been enabled on the loopback interface. So let's type router OSPF1 network and let's specify a loopback address. Now typing the command do show IP OSPF interface shows me that my router ID is still 10151. Let's type this command clear IP OSPF process and say yes to clear all OSPF processes. As you can see the neighbor relationship went down and then re-established. Show IP OSPF interface will show me that the router ID is still 10151. Now I could remove OSPF and re-enable it. But that's a bit of a blunt instrument to change the router ID. So I'm going to go conf t router OSPF1 router ID and then specify the router ID is quadruple one. And notice what the router says. Either reload or use the clear IP OSPF process command for this to take effect. So let's type clear IP OSPF process, say yes to clear all processes and see what happens. Once again, the neighbor relationship went down and reestablished. Typing the command show IP OSPF interface shows me that the router ID is now set to quadruple one. On router 2, show IP OSPF neighbor. Notice the neighbor relationship has changed to use the loopback address of quadruple 1. So let's enable OSPF on router 3 to ensure full connectivity between all subnets. Show IP interface brief will allow me to see the interfaces configured on this router 